Variables and Functions Think of variables as boxes that contain information. You need a different type of box for each type of information. We start our variable definition by saying what type of box we'd like. For example, the word int for an integer, meaning a whole number. Then we might name that box in order to identify it. Then we could finish declaring that variable by putting a semicolon on the end. Or we can give our box some information to hold, for example, the number 5. The first part of this is the declaration, and the second part is the initialization, where the actual box gets assigned some information to store. If we want to actually do something with it, let's put it into a function. As you may see, when you make a new script, we're given start and update functions. Start is called when the object this script is attached to enters a scene. We can put in a debug.log to get the value of any variable in our game. So let's take that myInt and put it in there. If I were to just log the value of that, I will see it in the console in Unity. If I save that script and attach it to a game object, for example, an empty object, when I press play, I see the value of my int shown in the console. So that variable is going to maintain that value until we give it a new value. For example, we could use the value of that variable with another integer. Here, I'm multiplying the int by 2. So now, the console will read out that integer multiplied by 2. So, 5 times 2 is 10. And of course, if we were to reassign that value, we will get a different value as we go along. So, if I was to say my int equals 55, then, although it was initialized to a value of 5, this is reassigned that value to 55, and now we'll get a value of 110. If I save my script and press play again, then we can see 110. To do something more detailed with our boxes or variables as they're known, we need to make a function, also sometimes referred to as a method. A function will take the boxes that we have storing information and give us boxes back, or return as it's known. The start function that I've just put in is an example of a function that doesn't return anything, so its return type is void. When we make our own functions, we can give them a specific type to return. So I might say int is a type for the function and then give it a name. I might call this function multiplied by 2 because that's what it's going to do for us. Functions can have parameters. So when we need to give a certain type of parameter to this function, I'll say int again, because that's the kind of information that I want to be able to feed this machine in order to get a result back from it. Keep in mind that the inner workings of my machine happen between these curly braces. So while the variable or parameters are within round brackets, you'll see that the curly braces open and close around the actions that are in our function. So where I've written int number here, I've effectively created a temporary variable called number that's part of my function or machine. And I'm going to use that in order to feed a number into this function when I call it in a moment. Within this machine, I'm going to create another temporary variable, and then I'm going to perform an operation on it. So I'm going to create another integer called result. Then I'm going to use that variable and say it's equal to the number variable multiplied by 2. I'm going to use this return command so that the actual result of running this function is that I'll output the value of result. Once I've done that, I need to actually call it. 
So I'm gonna go back to my start function and I'm gonna call multiply by two. And then instead of putting a new variable into my brackets, I'm gonna feed in a value to be stored within number. This time I'm gonna feed in my int. It will work because it's of the same type as the variable number. This time I'm feeding my int a value of five into my machine. It's going into the machine, then result, the new variable, is equal to my int. So five multiplied by two is returned via result. So the resulting returned value of multiplying by two, in this case, will be 10. But in my start function, I'm simply calling my multiply by two function. So this currently represents 10 because I'm feeding in five multiplying by two. But until I do something with the information being returned, no values have been changed. My int hasn't been updated with the return value of this function, for example. So I could say that my int is now equal to the return of this function. And then if I actually want to see that, I can use debug.log to see it printed again in the console window. So I'll save my script, switch back to the Unity editor, press play, and I can see a value of 10 is displayed.